never falter. Came with the hands out, get them off us. I'm 24 7 in the office. Pay attention, cause I ain't repeating offers. Yeah, never met a man I've been scared of. Careful, you won't get exactly what you asked for. Careful, whatever you bring me, get in hand. Or I answer to no one, I don't need to hassle. Yeah, yeah. we ain't never fall back. Hold our ground where we at. All right, what is happening, guys? This is our 2023 pre team preview for the fantasy six pack of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to round out our NFC team previews. Uh, my name is Eric Sonier. This is my boy, Dave Eddy. What's up, man? How you doing? Listen, man, looking forward to touting some Mike Evans today. Yeah. All right, I won't talk too much about him. <laughs> uh, just to get started, uh, I want to ask all you Tampa Bay fans, whatever you want to call yourselves, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and, you know, everybody else too. Uh, like your video for the Fantasy Six Pack. You can become an all-access member of the Fantasy Six Pack to get access to your award-winning rankings, draft cheat sheets. Our draft cheat sheet for the 2023 season just came out, DFS projections, betting tools, and other great content. Best of all, you get access to us directly on our Discord where you can get custom advice for all of your leagues. Go to fantasy6pack.net slash plans to sign up today. All right, man, let's go ahead and jump, jump right into the Tampa Bay Buccaneers quarterbacks. You know, hallelujah, the savior has finally retired. Tom Brady <laughs> is gone. He won't be coming back, you know, just for now at least. It's it's June, so, you know, he might, you know, he might slip back in there. But, you know, I don't, you, you never know. Pretty sure no matter what happens, he won't be in Tampa Bay. So that that's always good for me. Uh, you know, that leaves <laughs> Baker Mayfield, Kyle Trask, and John Wolford. Hall, you know, Hall of Famer Baker Mayfield, I think you mean. <laughs> Hall of, I actually do, used to like Baker Mayfield a lot until he signed with the Bucks. Yeah. Uh, consistent seems to be that this is Baker Mayfield's job. I mean, Kyle Trask hasn't really showed much. You know, John Walford's career backup. How do you see all this playing out? Um, well, I'll say, you know, first of all, luckily for these QBs, um, they do have a couple of great targets, you know, to throw the ball to. That being said, I'm fairly confident that Baker Mayfield gets the first crack at things here. Um, you know, eventually – something, whatever it's going to be, is going to happen. And then, you know, Kyle Trask, he's going to get his chance. Um, I think there ends up being some back and forth between these two guys. And, you know, nobody ends up standing out at the end of the year, you know, between them. Um, I think it's going to be a pretty interesting situation to keep track of, you know, as far as real life purposes are concerned. For fantasy purposes, though, really don't have too much interest in, you know, touching this. I, I don't think I do so. Um, but I do think at some point you are going to see flip flop, flip flop, flip flop kind of thing going on here. Yeah, that's a pretty good assessment. Uh, jumping over to the running backs, um, they lost Leonard Fournette, or they got rid of him, whatever you want to call him. You know, he, he seems to be out of gas. Um, they got Rakad White, who they drafted last year, or the I think it was last year. Um, yeah. He's he's pretty nice. I mean, I, he came on the team last year. <clears throat> they got Chase Edmonds, who's always kind of just been around. He's pretty he's pretty good, I guess. Um, Keyshawn Vaughn, they still have him hanging around, and uh, Patrick Laird and Sean Tucker as well. Um, in my eyes, Ricard White should lead this backfield. Uh, he has a lot of comparisons to Edmonds and Vaughn. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, competition from Edmonds and Vaughn, you know, siphon off some of his work. Do you think White can separate himself enough to end the season as a high end running back two, maybe running back one? Um, I mean, high end running back two probably is a little bit of a stretch. Um, you know, if, if their quarterback play was going to be better, then I would say you know, could be a baby. But I think they're likely to get some of the you know worst quarterback play in the league, and that is you know very much going to hurt you know White specifically. Um, it will kind of be interesting though, I think, to see you know how many targets he gets because I could very easily see him being you know well inside the top ten as far as targets for running backs are concerned. Um, I could see him being, you know, in the top five even, but he's just, he's never going to get the volume on this team in carries and in touchdowns to the point where I think he can push for a high end running back too. Um, you know, receiving volume, like I said, is going to make him an interesting play from week to week. So it could be more of a DFS kind of a thing. Um, but I think you're looking at more of a flex play probably than, than anything else here. Yeah. Um, uh, I agree. All right, moving on to the wide receiver group. The Bucks actually do kind of have a strong uh, receiving core, um, led by Mike Evans, as you were hitting to earlier. Um, Chris Godwin's always pretty nice. Uh, Russell Gage is a sneaky good uh, wide receiver. He's always you know pretty good when he plays. Um, a lot, I don't know if a lot of people know, but Trey Palmer is actually pretty good as well. They just drafted him out of LSU. 
uh, and they got Devin Tompkins as well. Um, Evan Godwin's return to give somebody really good targets to throw the ball to. I mean, um, with Baker Mayfield, like you said, he's kind of consistent. You know, he, he he might have some bad throws, but he's okay. Uh, will they both be able to put up viable enough numbers on this offense to remain at least wide receiver twos this year? Oh, man, it's, that's tough. I mean, I will start off by saying that, you know, both of these guys, when I say Godwin and Evans, they're, they're both great. Um, you know, and they have been for a while. If, and that is a massive if here, if they can both stay healthy, um, I think they're both going to remain kind of like in the conversation, for lack of a better term. Um, you know, to end the season is a wide receiver, too, in that range. I think more than likely, though, there's probably just not enough, you know, available here in this offense for them both to get there. Um, I would say they're both solid wide receiver threes for sure. I don't know if you can draft them there, um, but I think that if they were your wide receiver three, I think you'd be pretty good shape. Um, but for them both to finish as a wide receiver too, that, that I don't know, um, probably a little bit more interested in Evans of the two, um, you know, Evans, and we were talking about this, you know, off air before we, we got on today. Um, the dude is remarkably consistent. Like he's never going to put up, you know, like, you know, like overall wide receiver one numbers. He just, he doesn't get the volume, um, doesn't get the yards. Uh, he scores plenty of touchdowns. But it's Godwin that gets, you know, the catches and stuff. It's Evans is more your big play guy. But usually guys like that, I think of, you know, like a Mike Williams as opposed to Mike Evans, right? And a guy like Mike Williams is boomer bust. You know, he could give you 12 catches for 200 yards and three touchdowns. And then, you know, over the next three weeks, he catches 10 balls for 100 total. Um, but Mike Evans has just been consistently so good. Thousand yards every single season um consistently gets you about 70 catches a year you can chalk it up probably going to be good for eight touchdowns um so solid numbers not enough to win you a league and honestly probably just not enough for where you would need to draft him um but i still would take him over godwin yeah quick question though does he keep his thousand yard streak alive until he doesn't, I mean, listen, the dude's been dodging bullets. He had 1,001 yards um, in 2017, had 1,006 yards in 2020. So, you know, he's currently projected on fantasy data for 975 yards, which would just, man, if you get 975 at that point, I, you might as well retire. And I'm shocked. I mean, I think Mike Evans, I'm thinking, you know, dude's 33, 34 years old. He's still only 29. Um, right. It's it, it's just, yeah, he's younger than what you think. He's just Mike Evans, you think he's always been around a while. At least that's what I think. Um, but no, he's going to be 30 when the season starts. So he's really not, really not, you know, that old. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I agree. I think he'll probably keep it alive. Uh, you know, switching over to the tight ends, definitely least, uh, you know, last, Ooh. but definitely least. Yeah. This is not a good looking group. Uh, Kate Otten, Coe Keft, and Payne Durham. Uh, I don't, I don't know. think you I've said ever it's not a good looking Peter, group, but Kate Otten's a handsome man. <laughs> okay, there you go. Okay, I, I, I get what you're saying. But uh, <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've never even heard of Payne Durham. So, um, you know, Otten was good enough some weeks last year as a rookie, but again, that was with the GOAT, Tom Brady. I can't believe I just said that. Uh, yeah. Rookie tight ends typically have a lot of struggles, so he's, he was more successful over than overall than expected. Uh, figuring that neither of these other two guys will get too much in the way, where do you see Otten's seat going this year? Um, you know, simply put, not a big fan of K. Dot in this year, at least. Um, you know, it, this may be a team that ends up having to throw the ball more, you know, more than they want to. But even then, I don't think you know Otten is going to be any better than you know third in in the pecking order at best. Probably more like fourth or fifth. Um, I mean, I know I didn't talk about Russell Gage a second ago, but. You know, if Russell Gage is the focus of an offense, um, you know, he had a good run in Atlanta. The Duke can put up some numbers, too. So, um, you know, you've got at least those three. You've got Rashad White as well. He's got a battle. Um, you mentioned how good, you know, Trey Palmer could be. Um, so, I just I, – even though they may have to pass the ball around a little bit, I just don't see the volume being there for him. So, you know, really it becomes – can he become a serviceable streaming tight end to me? And I know that, you know, we're all super interested in talking about streaming tight ends. Um, but I just don't see even a tight end two value here. You know, maybe the stars align, right? And you got him with the right matchup on, you know, your, you know, maybe you got a, your starting tight ends injured, your backups on a bye week. And, 
you know, Kate Otten's going up against the Lions, and it's like, boom, smash. I'm going to drop, you know, $20, $20 in fab on them and watch them score two touchdowns that week. Um, but sadly, I think that's about as high as a, of an upside as we're going to get from Kate Otten this year. Yeah, definitely um, not a great-looking group, like you said. Uh, all right. Well, in conclusion, please, all you Tampa Bay fans, everybody watching this video, please like and subscribe to the Fantasy Six Pack. We're doing team previews for everybody in the NFL, along with all, all the kind of other videos going on for fantasy football. Um, like and subscribe, man. Uh, we got some good stuff coming out. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and we're out.